Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Music Den. I'm, of course, your host, Armando Venditti. Hoping you guys are having a good day. We are continuing with our top five albums of the 70s. In this segment, Bill and I will be covering 1975. How's it going, Bill? It's going well, Armando. How are you doing? Doing well, doing well. Um, before we get into this list for 75, how was doing this list for you? Like, overall, was it? An easy list or 75? No. 75, I think, was the most difficult year for me. 76 mm -hmm. was close, but 75 was brutal. Mm -hmm. Some of the things that I left out, wow. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. this is a real sweet spot for me, I think. And it's also the year my wife was born. So it's a good year. Good year all the way around. She didn't put out an album in 75, though, so we can't no. list her. No, no, I definitely would have tracked that down uh, for, for this episode. But okay. So again, he is a musician, so you never know. Well, there you go. There you go. Um, okay, so ladies and gentlemen, again, we are going to be giving you our top five um album picks for each year. Again, this is for 1975. Um, along with our top five, we are going to be giving you two honorable mentions. All right. The um, uh, the top five was Bill's idea. The honorable mentions was my idea. So as I said in the other videos, this is a Schuster Venditti co-creation, co-production. Um, so again, I will pass the virtual mic over to Bill and he'll give us his uh, number five. All right. Thank you, Armando. Uh, my number five is another... I have another well-worn uh, family copy that's been around since the 70s <clears throat> and still plays great. Uh, I have mentioned this band previously in the countdown, but yeah. this is my favorite album by them. I think it's I think it's their peak as a band, uh, especially side two with the epic song of Scheherazade. This is Renaissance <laughs> with Scheherazade and other stories. Um, yeah, the great Annie Haslam and uh, on here, John Camp also uh, does vocals on the song of Scheherazade itself. And I think that worked quite well with their, the blend of their voices, each playing different part, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, I think probably the most famous standout point of this album is at the end of the title track where Annie hits that note that high note where she repeats Shahrazad and she finally just hits this thing that I won't even pretend to hurt your ears with Shahra. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And it is just chilling. It's gorgeous. It's one of the greatest vocal moments ever as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. Um now side one is no slacker either. Trip to the fair starts it out and it's this creepy, weird, uh spooky song. It has this eerie laughter in it and it but the music's kind of playful at the same time i was tripped to the fair trip to the fair but nobody was there uh, yeah it's just a cool song uh the vultures fly high is probably my least favorite on the album it's kind of short more upbeat but it's still a good song and ocean gypsy is the closer on side one which is one of their most well-known songs mm -hmm. it's one that made their uh, famous uh Carnegie Hall live album that came out after this and uh, it was also covered later by uh, Blackmore's Night yeah okay and, uh, cool. so obviously Richie Blackmore himself uh, was well aware of Renaissance which is kind of cool mm -hmm. so uh, yeah highly recommended to anybody if you're interested in Renaissance at all if you don't like this album you might as well move on mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to check out that album and Prologue, actually. Yeah. keep from thinking about trying to find it on Amazon. but I'd recommend the two in between also, Turn of the Cards and Ashes Are Burning. but I have Turn of the Card. Nice. I have that, and I have the Carnegie Hall album. Um, <laughs> so I'm slowly collecting, you know, different different albums, different groups. Yeah, no. It takes That's time. a good one. That's a good choice. Um, my number five, ladies and gentlemen, is Heart with Dreamboat Annie. Um, 
you know, the Wilson sisters, I mean, the debut release released on the original release was on mushroom records, uh, a band based out of Seattle that had to come to Canada, you know, in BC in particular and get a record deal, um, and release, you know, their debut album, you know, magic man, dream, Bo dream, Annie, fantasy child, uh, crazy and you, the title track, and then dream, dream, Bone Annie, um, a reprise. Um, I just think it's a fantastic album. It's it's rock, but there's also the you know the acoustic element and a bit of a symphonic element to it. I like the fact that they have the three uh, sections of Dream Boy Annie on the album, um, like interspersed throughout the album. That it isn't put that they're not put all on one side kind of thing, um, because I think that gives the album a bit more balance. Um, but, um, good album, really good album. Um, some people say that they could never top this album. I wouldn't say they couldn't top it. Um, you know, but, um, it, it is a good album. It is a good debut. Um, uh, so that's my number five. All right. I will just say one thing about that. That was released in Canada in 75. It was released in the U.S. in 76. I'll just leave it at that for now. Good choice. Okay. okay. <laughs> I forgot about that. Oh, no, yeah, okay. Technically, <laughs> I'm safe. Okay. Yeah. I actually, no, no, no. Quickly, I actually had this as my listing for 76. But then when I was looking it up again, it said 75. So I moved it. Yeah, both are correct, depending on where you are. You, you are correct that. Yeah, it did come out in 75 first. But since I'm in the States, it came out in 76 and say no more for now. There you, there you, go. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <clears throat> <laughs> Number four, I still don't have a prop for. And I don't know how I managed to not have a prop for this because when we did our ranking show recently, this was my number one album from this band. It is Sabotage by Black Sabbath. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, somehow I don't have a physical copy of my favorite Black Sabbath album. But, uh, yeah, this yeah. I think is, I think this is their peak. It's Ozzy's vocal peak. It's uh, Tony as a uh, musician, as a songwriter. And, yeah, Side One is one of those perfect album sides. Uh, we went over it quite a bit in our album ranking for anybody who is up for a marathon and is into black Sabbath, uh, settle in for the long haul, grab yourself a drink and enjoy. And <laughs> tell yeah. us why we're wrong. There but, you go. There you yeah, go. Sabotage. It's yeah. Side one alone. Side two is awesome, but side one alone is enough to make it legendary, especially symptom of the universe. Which, dun, 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 dun. Yeah. That, that riff. And mm -hmm. uh, but it's a lot more creative than that. It's not just that riff. The whole yeah. song goes into all kinds of cool parts and megalomania, a mini epic, and that that song in particular might be Ozzy's best vocal performance. Yeah, yeah. I, just to I just mentioned I remember mentioning on the uh, show, um, on the ranking show that the vocals they just seem more urgent. On that album, more heightened in terms of his range, um, and yeah, it is a good album. It's a really good album, uh, especially that also the track, the instrumental Superzar. Yes, that's great. You know, so yeah, no, good choice. Yeah, that helps balance out the heavy stuff quite a bit, which I like. That's that light and uh, heavy mix is, I think, when Sabbath is at their best. Yeah. I would agree. Um, my number four <laughs> is Nazareth with Hair of the Dog. Um, again, I, 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 I've had the greatest hits from Nazareth for years. Um, but I never really got into their catalog until like a couple of years ago. Good album. Um, some releases have Love Hurts, 
on the uh, on the album. This is the British version I have. You've got okay the title track. I mean, you know, you know, with the lyrics, now you're messing with the son of a bitch. I mean, come on. I mean, just you know, Dan McCafferty's again, his whiskey drenched vocals is really just you know, and Manny Charlton's like slide guitar on this, just amazing, you know. Um, Miss Misery is another fantastic track, Guilty, Changing Times, uh, Beggar's Day, mixed with um Rose in the Heather, the instrumental section, you know, and the 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 lengthy, you know, the the final track, Please Don't Judas Me. I mean, just an amazing album. Um and the cover is iconic, you know, to it. So and to me, this was in the midst with Nazareth when they were in the midst of releasing albums that were just one after one after another banger, like just hit after hit album, right? Um, it would slow down near the end of the 70s in terms of the hits, but this was when they were like white hot, you know? Yeah. Yeah, this was probably their commercial peak era, definitely. Yeah. Um, that's a great one. Both of mine, I got the CD and the original vinyl here that are obviously both U.S. copies because they both have Love Hurts on the yeah. album, which, of course, was the, the monster hit. here. And uh, I, I know the Everly Brothers' uh, original version of Love Hurts, and there's Graham Parsons and Emmylou Harris did a, another a mellow country-ish version of it. but And Hart did uh, it, too. I forgot about Hart doing it. This this is still my favorite version. I know a lot of people hate it. It's over the top. It's but I think Dan absolutely nails the vocal on that song. There was so much emotion in his vocal yeah. delivery on every song. I mean, yeah. but especially with this one, it's just like it rips your heart out. It's like, oh my God, you know. Yeah, he really makes it hurt that. Yeah, I'm not as convinced with some of the other versions, but with Dan, yeah, I really don't think he believes in love. Yeah, no. in that song. So, <clears throat> uh, no, no, uh, and yeah, please don't Judas me. That that's an epic closer. That's an awesome song. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Good pick. Thank you. You're next. <clears throat> All right, my next number three. I surprised myself with this one because so many of my favorite artists put out classic albums in this year. And somehow this guy who is never one of my favorites made it to number three. Um, this is a, an odd little version here. It's the three disc version. Bruce Springsteen born to run. Mm -hmm. I like Bruce overall, but he's never been one of my favorites, but this is a stone cold classic. Every track is awesome. Uh, yeah, the title track might be Burn Out, but I don't care. It's still one of the greatest rock and roll songs ever. Just like Brian Wilson set out to do with Good Vibrations and Succeeded, Bruce set out to do the same thing with Born to Run and Succeeded. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, perfect song. And I think Jungle Land might be even better. Jungle Land is an amazing epic, and the big man Clarence Clemens really adds to Jungle Land with that sax. My God, that's yeah, that's a very emotional, powerful song. Uh, and uh, I, I really, in particular, like uh, Meeting Across the River too. It's it kind of gets yeah. forgotten about. It's just this slow, mellow, almost spoken song, but it's very, it's a very heartfelt song about this guy trying to. Uh, finally impress his woman and, and uh, look i'm not a loser after all well whether he is or not we'll never know because the song kind of trails off and with the story incomplete yeah yeah but yeah it's very well done the whole album is is classic and yeah this is the fun version it has the documentary and it has this cool uh london uh hammersmith uh, concert from 75 on the dvd which is pretty awesome I have that set. Yeah, it's it's nice. I got it at a closeout for ten bucks at a going out of business store, the local record store. I got ago. more. Than, I got cool. more than that. But I mean, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. No, I I've got that, and I think I I also have the Hemismith Odeon concert on a separate double disc that was available. 
that yeah and i mean thunder road i mean yeah like jesus christ i mean he's got a way to write lyrics that just paint a picture for you in your mind i mean you know mary comes out dancing across the porch you know with the door porch door slams and it's like like your heart is like aching you know like when you oh my god you know like i just love it i love it fantastic fantastic good choice good choice um my next one is a bit of a toss-up here um no you know what i'm gonna go with it i'm gonna go with it alice cooper uh, my number three alice cooper with welcome to my nightmare his first and only release for Atlantic Records in North America. Um, this was when Alice Cooper or Vincent Fernier took the name Alice Cooper um, when the band broke up after the album Muscle of Love, uh, produced by Bob Ezrin. This is Alice Cooper at Shock Rock slash Theater Best. Um, you know, the title track, uh, Devil's Food, um, The Black Widow, um, uh, Only Women Bleed, uh, Some Folks, um, Department of Youth, Stephen, uh, The Awakening. I mean, you know, and having Vincent Price, you know, do the the character of the curator of the, you know, of his of his dreams, you know, taking him through his dreams and and just the whole idea of this character, Stephen, going to sleep at night. And every time he goes to sleep, he finds it just a little bit more difficult to wake up in the morning to come out of the dreams. That is brilliant. I think it's just an amazing album. Uh, they used uh, Lou Reed's backing band who w were with him on Berlin. Um, if I didn't mention it, it was produced by Bob Ezrin. Uh, who also produced Berlin for the read just an amazing album I you know fantastic and it is my number three very nice I'm glad you mentioned it I was hoping you would because I'm not going to but I love that album yes uh, I mean only women bleed was a well-deserved hit though highly misunderstood a lot of people didn't get the idea that Alice was actually speaking up for women in abusive relationships rather than trying to speak down towards women so yeah if you well if you yeah if you sit there and listen to the lyrics you can tell that he's not speaking against or demeaning women that he's like speaking on behalf of women you know so and that's and yeah the uh the years ago Stephen and the awakening that trilogy that that's probably my favorite alice cooper moment those three combined it is so good Cool and yeah. creepy it's gorgeous it's... yeah i forgot to mention yes years ago and cold ethel and yeah you know the one track that talks about necrophilia you know what i mean it's, <laughs> he's got to uh, have one somewhere right? you know but you know, the dead just with, wasn't enough. <laughs> yeah and years ago with that three four waltz time you know like where he's at the fair and um it's it's all inter inter uh interlaced like in terms of the tracks in terms of the storyline just maybe he was at the fair with renaissance there you go could be <laughs> could be yeah fantastic album yes it is classic and he beat michael jackson to the punch with the uh vincent price uh guest appearance yeah <clears throat> yeah very much so very much so yeah Michael Jackson. Okay, moving on. <laughs> We're at number two. Yes, we are. Okay. Yeah, this this one came real close to being number one, but I couldn't quite get over the top. Uh, but I absolutely love it. I never get tired of it. It goes with the movie, which I also uh, never get tired of. You know what it is, folks. It's the Rocky Horror Picture Show original soundtrack. Stone Cold Classic. I could sing along with every song on this from start to finish, probably. I mean, you, if you know it, you love it or you hate it. I mean, again, that's like Zappa. It's another one of those things. There's probably not a lot of in between with this. Either people yeah. get it or they don't. Yeah. And if you do, 
you're my people. I see you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm here representing. <laughs> okay. No, yeah, it's a good soundtrack. It is. And uh, I can't tell you how many times I fell to the floor doing the time warp as a teenager. But, uh, I couldn't do it anymore because I would need help getting back up. Um, yeah, there's some really gorgeous songs on here. And Tim Curry gets a real heartfelt vocals in the uh, his final medley, essentially. The uh, Don't Dream It, Be It, and mm -hmm. Wild Montane Thing, and I'm Going Home. Mm hmm over at the Frankenstein place is a lovely song. There's a light. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's great. And obviously lyrically, it's uh, got all kinds of stuff that at that time, especially was undoubtedly quite controversial. Definitely. There's stuff on here that people still haven't come to grips with yet. There, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Very well done. Richard O'Brien riffraff himself uh yes who that wrote it the, all that was his brainchild yes mm -hmm. yeah it's a good one oh yeah how about that one um my number two ladies and gentlemen is pink floyd with wish you were here um the follow-up to the massively successful dark side of the moon mr bill schuster's got the shirt on how apropos for the show. Um, five tracks starts off with the, you know, showing on you crazy diamond, which was, you know, dedicated to uh, Sid Barrett, um, which starts off the album. You know, originally the idea was to have the, um, the entire suite one to nine, I believe done on the first side, um, but they decided to split it up. So you have, um, you know, Shine Your Crazy Diamond, Wish You Were Here, um, Have a Cigar, Welcome to the Machine. Um, and then the album ends with, you know, uh, Shine Your Crazy Diamond um, as the ending, you know. And again, the first release for Columbia in the U.S., they had left uh, Harvest EMI in, in North America because uh, they weren't satisfied with the promotion that the band that they were receiving from uh EMI Harvest, but you know the funny thing is you know Dark Side of the Moon was their best selling album and that was due in part to EMI Harvest in the US promoting it, you know. Um but they decided to leave them anyway and uh just a very fantastically produced album um there there was a story or there is a story of um while they were recording the album um two stories quickly um sid barrett ended up in the studio watching them record and they realized who it was because at that point when they first saw him they didn't recognize who he was and they asked him what what he thought of a piece of music they were working on uh, that ended up on the album. And he said, oh, it's been done before. And he walked out. Right. And um, also, um, uh, uh, Roy Harper um, uh, contributes vocals to, I think it's Have a Cigar um, on the album, uh, Roger Waters was going to uh, had tried to do do the vocal for it. He didn't like it. Um, Roy Harper uh, came in and uh, did it, and they kept it. And Roger Waters regrets having the vocal kept that way. He wanted to try and do it again, couldn't couldn't do it. So, anyway, that's my number two. Long winded story, but that is my number two. Um, <laughs> And really, Roy's vocal blends right in. He yeah. sounds much like some amalgamation of the uh, Pink Floyd guys' voices anyway on that song. Yeah, so. exactly. And he had said in an interview that when he was recording one of his next album in the next studio, he heard them working, he heard them bickering and arguing in the studio. And he walked in and he's like, well, let, let me have a shot at it. And he, sure. And he did it. And they kept it. 
But even he said at that point, you could tell there was dissension in the ranks. Like they were not getting along very well. And it started, they started to get on each other's nerves. So that's my number two. Well, that's a good pick. In fact, this is two years in a row that your number two is my number one. Pink Floyd, wish you were here. <laughs> we did not go over our list together, guys. We did not. Yeah, every, everything everything you said yeah there, there are times this has been my favorite pink floyd album but that's rotated between about four different albums over the years from time to time that um i'm glad they split up the the suite i i do have a uh a live version from the 70s that i throw on my uh shuffle playlists so i can hear the whole thing together but as an album, though, I think it it was a good move to frame to split the it. Album. Yeah, yeah, that worked really well. Uh, really, I'm kind of burnt out on "Welcome to the Machine," "Have a Cigar," and "Wish You Were Here." You know, the the three songs to me, those have been played to death yeah. in the states on radio. It's the "Shine on Me, Crazy Diamond" suite that wasn't played to death. Now I've heard from other sources it seems like uh across the pond in the uk at least i get the feeling that shine on you crazy diamond is what was overplayed and the others were not so much which is um no he, yeah here in canada you can still hear have a cigar you can still hear um, wish you were here on fm rock radio um almost at agnosium like the classic weekend you know when they start from friday to sunday and they play all the 70s hits and so that that it, they were played at ignosium like it is so yeah but as yeah. burnout as it is though it doesn't take away from what a classic this is and yeah, yeah. it yeah it's one of my all-time favorite albums so it did pretty well had to be number one in this very competitive year mm-hmm mm-hmm I How hear. awesome is that hypnosis cover? There are different variations, but yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And the fact that they got the stuntman to actually do that, like to be yeah. set himself on fire, you know, it was done on the back lot of um, the lot of in, in LA uh, for the photo. Um, so, yeah, classic, classic album. Um, guys, my number one is Queen with an At the Opera. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> what was that? I saw it coming. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry, guys. But um, a good album is a good album. Um, you know, their fourth release. Um, this was the culmination of what they were doing with the first three albums, the Queen, Queen 2, Sheer Heart Attack. This album... Um, was the the crown uh on top of everything you know um recorded in seven different studios um again produced by Roy Thomas Baker with the band um cost 35,000 pounds at the time of the production was done which at one point was considered to be the most expensive album made in the UK at that point uh, 12 tracks, you know, starting off with, you know, Death on Two Legs, Lazing on a Sunday Afternoon, I'm in love with my car, you know, um, 39, You're My Best Friend, Sweet Lady, uh, like, my God, you know, Seaside Rendezvous, um, from rock to uh, dance hall to pop to, um, you know, just frog with in the Prophet song. The fantastic ballad of, you know, Love of My Life, featuring an actual full-size harp that was played by Brian May in the studio. Uh, good Company, the George Formby-influenced track. Um, and Bohemian well, Rhapsody, you know, what can be said about that, right? Just an amazing album, again, from the cover art to the entire album, you know, there are albums for me that when you listen to them they take you back to a certain time every time i listen to this album i'm back to 1976 uh because that's when i first heard the uh, seven seventy seven. sorry because that's my neighbor eddie two doors down had a copy of this 
and he let me listen to it. That's the first time I heard the album in its entirety, and just amazing. So that is my number one. Hey, well, my first honorable mention, once again, is uh, one you've, well, in this case, just mentioned. A Night at the Opera by Queen. That's an honorable mention? My God. Okay. That's how great this year is. I, I was nitpicking hard on some of these. You know, I'm, I've said before, I'm not a big fan of Good Company. Mm -hmm. And Sweet Lady, I think, is just all right. It's an average Queen song. Mm -hmm. So the rest of the album, though, I love every other song dearly. There's just everything about them. But those two songs are enough to take it down a hair no matter how many masterpieces there are on here besides that. And <laughs> this, okay. I said this was the hardest year, and wow. Yeah. When you see this in the honorable mentions, that, that's what the competition is like here in 75. Yeah. Yeah. And there are so many we're not even going to talk about. It's just ridiculous that could make a list that could probably challenge any year in the 80s. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, a good good call. Obviously, uh, again, I I knew I could count on you to uh, <laughs> yeah. put Queen in here up top. Yeah, I got you. Um, my first my first honorable honorable mention. Sorry, uh, I am drinking tea, guys. Just tea. Um, my first honorable mention is it's kind of surprise people. Donna Summer with "Love to Love You, Baby." <laughs> I wish I would have known. I got that right behind me. I could get the prop out. Um, awesome. Guys, you know, Donna Summer, Disco Diva, Disco Queen, whatever you want to call her. The album came out in 75. This, um, see, because Donna's albums, Donna Summer's albums in the mid-70s, um, they usually consisted of one side that had one extended track for about 17 minutes. Okay. And this album, that's why it's an honorable mention because of the extended 17 minute title track, which some people have dubbed the ode to the orgasm. <laughs> because and herself was not happy about that. <laughs> no, she was not. Because they recorded the they recorded the the album or the, the single. It was played at a party at Neil Bogart's house owner of Casablanca Records. People kept requesting to replay the record over and over again. So Bogard called Giorgio Moroder, the writer and producer uh, of the album, and said, you have to make an extended mix of this. Like, make it as long as you can. 17, 10, 12, 15, 17 minutes. So they went back in the studio. Um, and they re... They, added the extended bridge, the musical section to it. So they heard Donna Summer in the recording booth. They turned the lights down low, and she simulated an orgasm throughout the uh, the rest of the track. She hated the tra that doing that, but the musical idea for the song was Donna Summer's. She brought the music, uh, the music idea to... Georgia Marauder and Pete Ballot, and they worked on it, and she got her songwriting credit, and the rest they say is history. So that's my first honorable mention. That is an awesome choice. Uh, yeah, I really do have that record right behind me. I'd have to move something to get it out at the moment, but uh, yeah, the Donna and Giorgio and Pete came up with some outstanding songs uh yeah throughout the mid to late 70s uh yeah that's great yeah the extended version is the only way to go with so oh, many of those songs. oh i yeah. know turn the lights down low and let it run i mean yeah that's... just get into the groove oh, yeah. donna is maligned a lot you know there was the whole disco sucks backlash back then and burning of disco records well sorry those people were morons if i offend anybody with that i don't care <laughs> you know what there mm -hmm. are well-crafted disco tracks yeah because back in the just quickly back in the 70s there were no very little uh dance um in terms of um dance start again there were very few drum machines so 
the take was done live off the floor. The drums were done live off the floor. If a drum um, pattern needed to be 10 minutes, the drummer was in the studio for 10 minutes doing the same beat, you know, to get it down on tape. So musicianship is musicianship, whether it's country, disco, dance, or rock. It is what it is. So, yeah. All right, now that controversial pick is out of the way. There you go. <laughs> I'll go for a much less controversial one. The only controversy about this is that I have it as an honorable mention. Uh, and again, this is one for whatever reason, I don't have a physical copy of at this point. I used to, but these are not cheap to replace, and I'm going slowly. Uh, it's uh, Physical Graffiti by Led Zeppelin. Oh, cool. Yeah, favorite album. It's a brutal year. It, the competition is insane. I mean, this has some of my favorite Zeppelin songs. It's a toss-up between this and Houses of the Holy as my favorite Zeppelin album. So yeah. at 10 years gone, that is probably my single favorite track on the album. Uh, Jimmy's guitar on that is some of his most gorgeous guitar playing in his entire career, I think. Yeah. Uh, and Robert put a great heartfelt lyric to the music and yeah. Mm -hmm. And then there's just these, obviously everybody knows Cashmere. It's a classic. Um, many consider it the best Zeppelin song. I don't, but I'm, it's not too far off. It's uh, timeless, mm -hmm. uh, but there's so many cool things like in the light and in my time of dying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. These it's, yeah. there is a little bit of filler on here. I think not a lot, I think I probably could have lived with it as a three-sided album rather than a four-sided if I could pick and choose, but I'm not going to complain about stuff that was included and I don't ever skip anything, but it's enough, just enough to take it into the honorable mention territory and out of the top five, but mm -hmm. it's obviously an amazing album. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, Zeppelin, Physical Graffiti. It's a good one. No, oh, that is a good one. Um, my... Last honorable mention for 1975 was ELO with Face to Music. Yes. Um, with, you know, the singles uh, Evil Woman, Strange Magic. Um, the lead off track, Fire on High. You know, the instrumental with the different sections to it. And, the, you know, it's just, you know, what sounds like massive drums from Beth Bevan, right? I mean, but just... An amazing album, um, but I mean, also other songs on there are Poker and Waterfall. I mean, just, uh, just, I mean, Jeff Lynne is considered to be a pop tunesmith. Like he can turn anything into, you know, he could sing the phone book into a pop track. I mean, it's like, you know, a long pop track, but I mean, it's, you know, he could do it. I mean, and his love for the Beatles right from the beginning of his recording career with Yellow is prominent and it's evident in all of the recordings. But he is a maestro at turning out pop confection and, you know, with a heavy symphonic tinge to it. And this album is no different, you know. But is this an album that I put on to listen to? Uh, a lot, no, no. There's uh, the album, a new world record, is one I would put on before this one, but it's still a good album, All right? And again, just because these albums are are in our honorable mentions, it doesn't mean that they're bad albums. Or if an album is at the bottom of a list, that it's a bad album. It's just when you do these lists again, you have to like, you have to put them somewhere. You know what I mean? And that's my final honorable mention with ELO and Face the Music. I'm glad you mentioned that because it was painful for me to leave that one out. Uh, that I've always loved that album. There was just, I think, uh, Down Home Town takes it down a notch. I like it okay, but it was enough to keep it out. But side one is perfection. Fire on High, Evil Woman, Waterfall, and Night Rider. Yeah, That's one of the perfect album sides. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely the, awesome. Just there are artists like 
that are able to come up with me with melodies and hooks and vocal harmonies that are just like, what am I listening to? Like, what the hell is this? You know? Did you ever try to uh, play the record backwards to hear what they were saying at the beginning of Fire on High? No. The Christmas for the service. I mean, I'm, do you know what they're saying? Do you, no. It's actually uh, the music is reversible, but time is not. Turn back. Turn oh. back. Oh, okay. Okay. So, and that was also famously used uh, as the opening montage music for ABC's Wide World of Sports back in the 70s. Really? Yeah. Strangely okay. enough, yes. I learned something new. I had no bloody idea. I had no idea. I had no idea for that. Okay. That's cool. That's cool. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that comes, that's the conclusion of our uh, top five albums of 1975. Um, mm -hmm. We will be back soon with 1976. Uh, please put down in the comments, down there, down below, what your top picks of 1975 are. They could be 10, they could be three albums, they could be five, whatever you like to do. And if you want to do an honorable mention, please do. Um, the idea is to, again, is to get people involved and, and you know create a bit of a dialogue here. And also please do the same for the previous episode for 1974. Um, again, we will, Bill and I will be back. Sorry. Again, this is just tea in this cup, ladies and gentlemen. Um, <laughs> Long and Island will... iced tea. No, no, never. I'll tell you a story off camera. Um, so we will be back with 1976. Please stay tuned and uh, please look after yourselves and one another. For Mr. Bill Schuster, I am Armando Venditti saying have a good night. Bye-bye. <laughs>